I'm getting ready to go back to the U.S. to visit, not to live. Here are some things to expect when traveling from the Dominican Republic to the United States. Hello, hola, it's Yanni and Kayla. Hola, hello from the DR of Buffalo. So I traveled back and forth between the U.S. and the Dominican five times now. I've only done it five times, which isn't that much, but here is what I have experienced. First of all, COVID testing is finished and there are no more masks, which is probably the best and most exciting thing for me. Okay, before anything, do not forget the e-ticket. I almost forgot to say that because the e-ticket is basically the customs form that used to be in paper. When I went to the Dominican Republic in high school, I filled it out in paper. It was not online, but now it's online. It's like eticket.com slash migration or something like that. And that has to be filled out before getting to the airport because they give you a QR code, like a receipt page, and you're supposed to bring that with you. I have not been asked for that every single time, but I have been asked. So they do ask for that QR code to make sure that you did fill out the e-ticket online. So that's first, before anything, before even getting to the airport, do not forget about the e-ticket. So choosing an airport. I have used two different airports because I am in San Pedro de Macariz, which is at the very bottom of the Dominican Republic, and it's in the middle of two airports. There's one in Santo Domingo, which is in the capital. That is the biggest airport that I've been to. That airport is huge. It does have delays only on JetBlue though. Wow. Santo Domingo is easier to get to. For me, it's cheaper to get to because I can take a bus from San Pedro to Santo Domingo, the airport. It's very cheap. It's 150 pesos for a ride, and then from the bus I get off, and I have to take a moto to the airport, and that moto is about 200 pesos if it's Mariano and I. That's way cheaper than an Uber and significantly cheaper than a taxi. The other airport that I've used is Punta Cana, and I know a lot of other teachers who have used that airport as well. That one is smaller, and coming back to the Dominican, I always use that one. La Romana also has an airport, but I've never seen planes come or go, and I don't know who uses it, and I don't know what it's for. At the airport, I go to the counter. I don't check any bags when I'm leaving the Dominican, but I go through security, and then right after security, I have to remind myself not to get in the customs line because I stay longer than 30 days. I overstay the tourist visa, which is included in the airline ticket, and I have to pay the impuesto. They have fees ranging from one month all the way up to 10 years. I have paid with my credit card before. I've also paid with cash. I did hear about another teacher who tried to pay with her card and it wasn't working. So I would always bring cash just in case. After I pay that, I get a little paper slip or whatever, and then I can go through customs. I give them that slip that shows that I paid, I give them my passport. I have never been asked any questions ever when I'm leaving. They just take my passport, check it, and then I go. I have not had any problems with that. I have heard other teachers who get questioned a lot, but that has never happened to me, leaving the Dominican at least. Watch, now it's gonna happen when I go, but it hasn't happened yet. At the airport, the Santo Domingo airport has a lot of Things. They have a lot of restaurants there. They have stores there. However, I usually pay with cash. I pay in pesos. I don't even remember what American money looks like. It's been two years. I think it's green. But getting on the plane from Santo Domingo at least, everything's in Spanish. The overhead is in Spanish. All the directions are in Spanish. So either watch the screen or speak Spanish. On the airplane... All of the flight attendants that I've come into contact with are bilingual. They do speak English and Spanish, but it is possible that the flight attendant will only speak Spanish. But again, they just ask you what snack you want. And then once I arrive in the United States, I don't have any checked bags, so I go right through customs. They don't really ask me questions. One time, 
I did get asked if I was bringing anything with me, anything, items I needed to declare. And I was like, no, I don't have anything. And he was like, you didn't even bring gifts for anybody? And I was like, um, no. Was I supposed to? But they don't ask me any questions other than if I bring gifts for people. So that has been my experience. Once I get to the airport itself, I didn't have a track phone several times. I was able to get on the airport Wi-Fi and use WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger to make a phone call that way. But now I have my track phone so I can just call or send a text message to whoever's picking me up and be on my way. So the two most important things are the e-ticket, don't forget about that, and also I have to check into my plane, of course. But second is the impuesto paying the tax. If you overstay your visit, which is after security, but before customs. And there are not really signs. You have to look for it really well in Santo Domingo. It's like off to the side. And one time it was just a random counter. So that's pretty much it. That's what to expect traveling to the United States from the Dominican Republic. I gotta get ready to go. I gotta finish packing. So until next time, peace out. I'm doing fine. So is your worried mind. Sit back and close your eyes. Yeah, yeah, this land is a paradise. And the people are so very nice. I'm happier than I've ever been in my life.